What's up, y'all? You're watching Brooklyn Shuffleboard, and we are out here at the newly opened Lansing Shuffle in Lansing, Michigan, for a shuffleboard singles exhibition match between Missy, the Missile Keiko, the number one female shuffleboard player in the world, and me, the reigning Brooklyn singles champion. We were hanging out here last night. This place is amazing. Delicious food inside, cheap drinks, great music, and the courts play really, really well. Definitely recommend you check this place out if you're in the area or sign up for the league when it opens. Cannot stress enough how nice these courts are and how fun they are to play on. Subscribe if you haven't already and enjoy the match. Thanks so much for joining us. All right, we are ready to get this thing going. Uh, we have a very special episode for you today with Missy and I playing. Uh, obviously, no one there to do commentary. So instead, I'm going to do commentary from the comfort of my bedroom and walk you through everything going through my head during this match. And let me tell you, this was a really, really great match that came down to the last shot. Uh, yeah, so let's get this thing going. So we had already taken our warm shots at this point. Um, just going to walk you through a little bit of the drift really quickly. Um, so this was one where the, the court sort of drifted to the center lines. Um, so we had some drift here, drift here, drift here. On the right side, drift there, drift there, drift there. Sort of like shooting from the one spot, it curved to the center line. Um, and yeah, that's sort of like all I really remember at this point. Definitely throughout the match, uh, things got pretty interesting. So yeah, let's get this going. All righty, let's get this going. All right, perfect. All right, so starting off with St. Pete's, and you can see that, that disc curving to the right a little bit. Not too much, though, not too crazy. Um, I'm pretty happy with that as a St. Pete. And yeah, we got some hard clearing going. Really nice clear from Missy. So my move generally in the beginning of the game is just like keep throwing up the St. Pete's. Um, Tampa's, I like throwing them up, but the placement of a Tampa uh, really is important. And if you miss just to the right a little bit, you give your opponent a hide. So early in the game, I'm just sort of going for St. Pete's. And the third one was short. I hate, hate when that happens. Um, not only because it doesn't give me an opportunity to hide, but because um, it's just kind of a signal to my head that I'm off <laughs> right now uh, with my speed. Um, or that there's a slow disc, something I have to like pay attention to. So just something that like rattles the confidence a little bit. Um, last shot, going tip of the 10, maybe a high 10, I can't remember. And this was a really interesting one. So with that center line drift, Missy lines up and is going down the right side. And she gets the hammer, really nice gauge of drift. She was aiming like there for that and it curved back to the left. So really nice hammer for Missy and uh, must feel good on the first, first frame of the game. All right, so she just sort of goes on the board. Like, I don't know if that was a hard, uh, a hard St. Pete, but I don't blast the clear. And I'm just gonna pause real quick to talk about that. So something I do occasionally is, if I'm not feeling super confident with my warm-up shots, or I just want an opportunity to confirm the amount of drift that I read from the warm-up shots, I'll sometimes do that. So I, I remember for that one, it was drifting, I thought, three inches towards the center line, towards the camera left. So what I did was I shot at clear and replace speed, maybe even like kitchen plus speed, aimed at the edge of the disc, and ended up hitting it straight on. So that, for me, confirms that my read from my warm-up shot of three inches of drift is correct. And it makes me feel much more confident if I do need to go for a kitchen that I know what the drift is. Um, yeah, the risk though is that I leave myself exposed to a kitchen. So it's something I typically don't do too often unless I'm really feeling unsure of the drift from the warm-up shots. So yeah, I'm on the board. And Missy sort of goes for like kind of a kitchen speed shot and you can see how much that drifted to camera left. So not, neither of those are in. Um, but yeah, like definitely something I'm trying to think about for when I play black after we switch uh, colors because the 16 frame game where we switch color halfway, like I need to know that, that cross court drifts left pretty hard. And this is one where I make a pretty sweet bump into the seven. Not only is it in, but it is blocked up. And I probably wouldn't have gone for that shot had I not um, taken that that sort of like drift confirming shot earlier because I felt really confident about that. Normally, if I'm not feeling confident about it, I don't go for it because I don't want to get kitchened. Um, but yeah, that was that was pretty sick. So she's probably going to try to blast it, try to clear both. And yeah, just misses. Um, really, really close though. So now I'm thinking, see, see the court 
from her side, you saw me peek over there and put up a really nice block. Um, yeah, that's super good. When I'm trying to put up blocks like that, I want the distance between the two discs to be about three and a half, four, maybe five feet. Probably like four feet is sort of like what I go for most often. The idea is like if it's more than that, they could sometimes hide around the disc and get to it. And if it's less than that, they could blast and they're more likely to get the combo. So that four feet difference is sort of like what I think has the sweet spot. And yeah, Missy goes for a score on the right and you saw how much that, that hook to the left. So definitely something to think about as this match goes forward. And a hammer shot from me is barely in. That's, that's in. But like, A, I almost messed up and knocked her into points, and B, I almost undershot it. So definitely something going on with like this speed or just me being off, but either way, I'll take the two scores on my hammer. So yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about that frame. All right, frame three. Uh, I'm just in sort of like clear and score hammer mode for this frame. Don't get the clear. Um, and in the palms, like if I'm if I'm Missy or if Missy's playing at the palms, like she's definitely right. aiming like right over oh. over here. Yeah. Try to aim maybe at that eight seven line and get the hide. Honestly, the problem is with hide. the courts here, as you saw, a how much that hook left. But the the table is so in the way. Like she's not able to shoot from the four spot because these tables here are straight up in the way of you shooting from the outside. So definitely. One of the challenges of this of this court is like whoever is on the left side can't really shoot from the four spot. Um, so yeah, I just try to blast that and I stick it. So really, I just want to blast it because I'm not trying to play the kitchen game right now. Uh, unfortunately, I stick it and Missy it with a really nasty kitchen shot um, on the center line with the black disc. But that is kitchen that is in the kitchen and hidden behind the yellow. So what I'm, I'm debating now whether to just clear the disc up front or try to go down the alley because I think I have a line on it. And I'm going down the alley on this. Yeah, so I make the shot feeling really good about that. The one thing, as I pause really quickly, to think about for this is if you're going for that sort of like Hail Mary shot down the alley, the worst, worst thing that can happen is you miss to the right because then you're left with the exact same situation, a disc in the kitchen and a disc up front. So people sort of use the phrase like miss to the left. That basically means that if I'm going to not clear the kitchen, miss to the left in a way where I clear that blocker out and that way I expose the kitchen for a second chance on the next one if, if Missy's not able to block it up. Uh, that one though no, just just nailed it. Which is kind of I don't really like go for that unless I feel really confident. So I was kind of surprised that I went for that and that I got it to be honest. Alright so Missy going for what looks to be like a high eight, maybe a split that came up short and me shooting a hammer down the left side from the outside like I like and I missed that terribly that was awful because I not only missed it to the right where I knocked her into the seven but I overshot it where if I didn't touch that I probably would have kitchen myself so that was like real rough and kind of echoes what I was saying about like earlier in the frame missing the lag line um on the hammer, barely getting the hammer on the prior one. Like something's going on with the disc being different speeds or just me being off. And like, there you go. I'm doing this hand move. Uh, I was supposed to be a St. Pete and I overshot it. So I don't know what's going on with this court right now. Uh, Missy clears it off, trying to play for the hammer, especially after that last frame where she, where I didn't score my hammer, I didn't gain points in my hammer. Second shot, missed the lag line. Uh, yeah, definitely struggling in this in these first four frames. Oh, it's so rough. Look how dejected I look. All right, so in the situation earlier where Missy had the hammer and that extra disc, she threw off the side. This time she decides to switch it up and uh, throws up a Tampa for herself. So she's sort of like changing strategies a little bit, thinking I don't want to just play for the hammer. Maybe I'll like play a little bit more finesse game on this frame. And yeah, let's see if it works out. So I try to fill in. I'm trying to put that disc like right here and instead it curves to the right and ends up where she can hide down the alley. So I don't remember if she gets this or not. Let's see. Taking the time. No, you can just see how much that curved to the right. Yeah, that thing, Drift really took that as soon as it left the tank. 
So now I'm probably gonna like clog up the board for a hammer. Like I want this disc to go like right here, maybe even like right here and overshoot it. And it's a little bit too far to the left. So she has a lane to make that eight uh, between the yellow and the black disc on the left. Let's see if she gets it. That's pretty good. Yeah, nice, nice seven. Overshot a little bit, also didn't curve into the center as much. Uh, it clipped this yellow disc a teeny bit, the one over there. Um, but yeah, nice hammer, and after four, it is tied, 22-22, as I take a sip of my cocktail. Yeah, so still sticking with that St. Pete game. Honestly, probably knowing the drift with that like cross-court hide being so hard for her, it probably makes sense for me to play more of a Tampa game here. And, and you can see I'm starting now. And the reason why I say that is because with the leftward drift, there's no way, like Missy would have to hide that disc right there. And there is no way with that, with that leftward drift that she's like getting back there. So even if my Tampa is a little bit off, like let's say the Tampa was there and I would have, give her a hide opportunity, she's not gonna be able to get it because the drift. So probably would have made sense for me to start throwing up those Tampas earlier, but I mean, this is only my second frame off hammer, so I'm not gonna be too, too hard on myself here. Yeah, all right, so she doesn't fully clear it, but there's nothing I'm hiding behind. Another Tampa. That one is picture perfect. Maybe I'm starting to get the speed a little bit. And same thing, doesn't really clear it. Kind of clears it into like a St. Pete, but we're already at the end of this frame here. So my choice is just to choose a side to block it up or put it at the tip of the 10, or maybe go for a high eight. I end up going for a high eight on the right. It ends up being a deep eight on the right. And this is one of those ones where like, I put it on the harder side because of the drift. So I saw how much drift there is on that right side. So I thought maybe she'd miss because of the drift. Um, put it over there. And looks all right. Ooh, curves left, but she gets the kitchen. Yeah. So she ends up on the center line but she gets the kitchen. Oh, look at me shaking my head. <laughs> that is like such a nice shot. That was awesome. All right, so frame six. I'm down 10. Really not nervous though at this point, like, I don't know, 10 point game, it's still so early. I don't really like get nervous unless about the score until like the 10th frame in a 16 frame game. I'm sort of like sticking to the game plan until we approach the end game. So nice clear on the first one. She throws up a St. P, curves left a little bit, but still pretty good for her. And clear it nicely. All right, looks like she's switching up to Tampa on the left. And that is short, but I'm not really gonna try to hide like a 10 or a eight behind that. That would be crazy. So I'm just gonna keep it clear. That'd be crazy because of the drift. And also, well, I'm losing a little bit, but. All right, so her last shot. It's either high eight, high 10, or block the center. Those are like the three most common that people do. And ends up with a block at the, at the center. So this is one where I remember I took this line and it drifted left a little bit. Remember that bump that I had, but not a ton. So let's see if I can get this. Looks pretty good. Oh, shoot it real hard. And I just get it. That was crazy. So yeah, still, like there must be a fast disc there. Um, Cause that one was like a near self kitchen. It looked like it was going in the, in the kitchen until the very end and it stopped. These are not beaded courts, by the way. They just sort of like play pretty smoothly. Haven't really been played on, played on a lot. I think we were the first people to book a reservation on these courts. Because uh, it had like just opened and at uh, the week before Memorial Day. So for that one, I don't know what I was trying to do. Maybe I was trying to like roll that to the right as a Tampa, I guess, like trying to get a little fancy. And she tries to do the same, trying to kitchen me or roll it back to a Tampa for her. And this is one where I'm, I think I, I try to like hide behind this for some reason, even though the score is pretty even. 
Yeah, try to hide behind it, and it curves right. And I remember when I made that, I was, like, expecting it to curve left, which doesn't make any sense. So maybe I thought, like, the drift over here would pull it left, or maybe in one of my practice shots it, it felt like it curved left a little bit, but I just completely forgot the drift on that one. Um, not good. You could tell I'm not writing down the drift in my phone. That's kind of why I do it at the palms all the time, because I can't remember for the life of me. Ooh. She tries to hide an eight behind that and misses, and then this is one that I feel really good about, because that's like a perfect tempo for me. So I'm gonna keep the aggressive play and try to hide behind that. And yeah, that one like didn't really curve left that much. That was really interesting. It looked like it was curving left and then kind of like straightened out a little bit. So this is a tough one for her, because like she can't really get to it. She can't really hide behind it. Uh, she's in a tight spot. She could just block up and, and hope up? that I miss the hammer, but right. this is really a tough one. She could try to bump her own in to points, maybe. Um, she did make her hammer shot in the first frame kind of with this line. So let's see what she goes for. I remember this being a really good shot. I'm not going to spoil it. Yeah, navigates ah. the drift perfectly oh and gets me out. Like, I did not see that coming at all. That was an incredible shot. So now all I can do is go down the alley, hope that I know the drift right, and see if I can get this. And I miss it. So that was really rough. That was one where I thought it was going to drift like five inches to the left, and it, it drifted like one inch to the left, and I missed it. Almost rolled myself into the kitchen. Uh, not feeling good about this, these first eight frames. I had one good frame, the second frame. Other than that, I got like kind of lucky with a deep seven hammer. I've been missing the lag line. I misjudged the drift on a hide. Uh, this has not been a great first eight. Um, but yeah, like if, if the discs are different speeds, I know she's going to have to deal with that on the back half. So I feel pretty good with like a close, tight game at this point. I'm not getting blown out. I'm hopefully switching to the easier color on the second half. Oh yeah, this is one where I'm going to point this out. I'm going to pause it for a sec. So with this table, like right here, normally I would want to shoot this disc from the four spot and just like angle it cross court, make like a seven or an eight. But instead I have to shoot from the, the kind of the center and you can see my side is riding up against it. So all I can do is like aim here and with the drift pu pushing to the right, this is like an impossible shot. Um, but I'm going for it anyway. Man, those tables straight up in the way. And yeah, like I needed to hug that that black disc way closer. Instead, I end up on the center line. I even hit the table. <laughs> oh, there's a chipmunk over there. Yeah, hey, look at this guy. Get him. Yeah, that's something you don't get at the palms. I've actually never had that happen. Um, I was kind of I was secretly hoping he would like run on the court. Um, instead, he's just kind of curious. You know, this place just opened. He wants to know what this the club's all about. And that was a weird one where her disc, like it was curving this way and then at the very end it curved back that way so just really really strange sort of like nuance to the drift on this court and me i think i'm going for a split here maybe trying to hide behind that with like get an eight let's see yeah trying to hide cross court eight and end up on the center line not not ideal and yeah missy just has a wide pretty wide open hammer on the right not totally wide open but pretty wide open on the right side. So yeah, it looks pretty good. A little hard, maybe. No, it's perfect. Right on the printed eight. Super nice hammer shot from Missy. And after eight, she's up 11. But as mentioned, you know, I was struggling on the yellow. Maybe she's going to struggle on the yellow on the back half. So yeah, we got four warm-up shots we're going to do. Um, I don't know exactly what she's going for, so I'm going to talk about my own uh, strategy for warm-up here as soon as she finishes. That's what I'm saying. Not great warm-up from her, too, though. That, like, both the 8 and the 10 that she's going for came up short. The last one, so you can see a curve left towards the center line, looked pretty good. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's talk a little bit about it. I sometimes switch up the order of my warm-up shots, um, but... Usually I'll start, let's see if I start with the, t the Tampa, the, the Tampa. So yeah, I am going for, first warm shot, you see me from the outside going towards the Tampa. And that one came up really short. 
So not feeling good about that. Second one, I'll probably go like cross court. Going for the 10. Oh no, going for the Tampa again because I came up short the first time and I came up short the second time. So now I'm gonna go cross court or down the center at the, at the 10. Yeah, cross court, trying to figure out where to aim to get that hammer. I feel like I judged the drift right, but also short on the black. And this was the, probably the one where going, oh, same thing, see if I can get the speed down. And I get the speed down a little bit on the last one, so that feels all right. But yeah, there's like this weird thing that happens where the black discs kind of everywhere are slower than yellow discs. It has to do with like the material that they're made out of or, or something like that. But definitely something to keep out, keep an eye out for uh, when you're playing and you're, you are switching color is that black discs typically do end up, do tend to be slower. And then if you're doing like a speed shuffle at the palms, like one of those tiebreaker things, start with the yellow. Because when you're shooting all eight discs and doing a speed shuffle, the worst thing that can happen is to block up the front of the board. You sort of want to start, you sort of want to start with shooting sevens. So you want to start with the faster color discs, yellows, aim for those like sevens and then switch to the blacks. And that way, if you come up short, it doesn't really ruin your whole speed shuffle. So that's speed shuffle pro tip for you. All right, let's see if I can do anything productive with these warm-up shots. Because I was planning a whole strategy thing on warm-up shots, and then I just shot three of the four discs super soft and didn't really learn any information about the court. That one I was aiming for a 10. It kind of curved maybe to my left a little. Uh, came up super short. This one I'm trying to hide behind that, and it curves right and then kind of straightens out, but also didn't even make it into the house. Not great. Uh, this is I'm trying to shoot cross court at an eight, trying to figure out if I can hide behind anything. Uh, no idea if the drift was good on that because I shot way too short, and then I'm going for that same shot again, and came up way too short. So kind of a disaster warm-up shot. I feel like I didn't really learn anything about the court because I didn't make the disc into the t into the house, and I don't, clearly don't have a good sense of speed. Uh, so with being down 11. Like, not a great place to be in with such a bad round of warm-up. Um, yeah, and that one, that one kind of, like, curves to the right a little bit. So, I don't know, maybe I'm going to try to hide behind this being down 11. No, just go for the clear and barely get it. But, you know, that's clear enough. She goes for the Tampa. That is, like, a perfect Tampa. Really nice shot from Missy. I'm probably still trying to clear, and I stick to her. So this gives her, oh man, look at that disc bouncing back. So this gives her a perfect uh, hide opportunity here. And let me just show you like where she needs to aim on this one real quick. So when you are going for a hide, what you want to do is like look at the cord from your opponent's side, which she did not do in this case. But kind of look at the disc from your opponent's side, look through that blocker up front, and then aim at a point on the court where I can't get to because that black disc is in the way. That's the whole idea of, of, of hiding. So basically she wants to aim maybe like right here or maybe like right there because that black disc is in the way. That is hiding 101, always look at the court from your opponent's side so you know where to aim. And yeah, so let's see if she can get it. And that comes up short and it kind of like hooks to the right a little bit, which is interesting because I thought that was supposed to hook left a little bit. And it didn't. So this is a tough decision for me. I'm trying to figure out, like, am I going to clear that black disc? Um, and, and what you're doing when you're trying to choose which shot to take is you're trying to, like, evaluate all of your options and play out the rest of the frame and see how it would play out and how advantageous of a position you're in. So my options are clear the yellow out. She gets the hide again, and I hope she misses it. Clear the black out. She has to try to bump that yellow into points and hope she misses it or go on the board on the left and hope she doesn't kitchen me or try to bump that black into a 10 and hope that I get it. But that's like a pretty hard shot. So you want to evaluate how the frame would play out for all of those different options and then the likelihood of you getting the shot. So me clearing a disc, much higher likelihood than trying to bump that 10 in. Me bumping that black disc into a 10 worth more points, but really low percentage for me to get it versus... Uh, the strategy of just sort of like clearing stuff, higher percentage for me to get it, but she still has the advantage in the frame where she could either hide or bump her own disc in. So 
It kind of looked like I'm lining up down the left side here. No, I go for, oh yeah, I go for an eight on the left and it comes up on the center line. So this is a tricky one because I, yeah, I, didn't, I mentioned that, like I, I try to put a point on the left, she just has another hide opportunity right away. So kind of like the high risk, high reward strategy by scoring on the left and also not even getting the score. And yeah, that is a perfect high. That is exactly where I drew the dot earlier. Uh, that is super hidden. However, I think she probably wanted that in the eight instead of a seven. Um, yeah, what I'm thinking now is like, I kind of need a miracle shot. So what I'm thinking is bump this black disc into that yellow. And I'm not really trying to kitchen it. I'm just trying to get two scores out of this thing. Um, really, really hard shot, but I did kind of just take this line a second ago. So same starting position, kind of the same aiming point, just a little bit more power. She looks pretty good. And yeah, get the nasty split. That feels real good. Uh, so that was good. I didn't get the kitchen, but I got the 15 points and suddenly I am very much back in this game. So her taking that hide, had the advantage, she had the advantage on the frame, but I made a super hard shot to sort of have the, the gain on there. So yeah, great frame. So yeah, I'm, I'm just still putting up these Tampas. Looks pretty good. I think I switched the Tampa because I figure it's so hard to hide behind the St. Pete because of that leftward drift on the right side of the court. Um, much easier to hide behind a Tampa if you're black on this court than to hide behind a St. Pete. So yeah, three Tampas, um, all pretty happy with them. I mean, she could maybe like hide a 10 or something and it would put me in a tight spot, but um, pretty happy with, with those three Tampas. And yeah, probably going high eight, high 10. Let's see it. High 10, and it's a deep 10. Which at the Palms, you know, this is like a, a thing that people do all the time, like kitchen that and score 20 point shot. In the Palms, it's so hard to do that because the center of the courts are very unpredictable. Um, other places though, the center of the courts are pretty straight. And yeah, she gets the 10, but like critically didn't go for the kitchen. She cleared to play speed, cutting through any little drift that there is, and makes a really nice hammer. So definitely feeling good. Equal frames left, or equal hammers left. There's three hammers each left, and Missy's up six. So she must be feeling good with that, with that hammer. And yeah, same thing, throwing up Tampa's. Really smart to do because of how hard it is to hide cross court. Um, and yeah. Also, Tampa's closer to the center of the board, a little bit harder to clear. All right, I switched it up to a St. Pete because there is something that happens where when people clear that, one disc may clank, um, hit the other, bounce into the other, and stay put. So I think that's probably why I switched it up. She sticks it, and now I have a hide opportunity, but as mentioned, I can only start from here because that table's in the way. Normally, I'd want to start this disc from out here. But that, yeah, that side table's in the way, and with the leftward drift, like, you know I'm missing this. Yeah, I, I get, try to get as close to that yellow disc up front as possible, and I clip it. Um, so now I'm leaving myself open to a kitchen opportunity, which is something I typically avoid doing. Let's see, oh yeah, so she doesn't go for the kitchen. She tries to shoot, like, a, put something on the 10 line. I don't know exactly if she was, maybe she was trying to snuggle that? Pretty interesting, though. Because I could go down the left side and try to split it. I don't know. I think I just tried to block it here. Oh, yeah. This is... That's good. So what I tried to do is block her ability to get that 10-8 split. But keep my disc center enough where if she goes down the left side, uh, she might clip the block. And with that drift to the right, I'm kind of thinking maybe she'll clip it. Oh. She barely misses it. Uh, really, really nice read of the drift, but unfortunately ends on the 8-7 line. So really, really unfortunate from Missy. No score on her hammer, and suddenly I regain the, the control, like the advantage a little bit, because I have one extra hammer. I'm still down six, but like, you know, if I convert on this hammer, I'm up, even if I get a seven. Yeah, so I kind of stick the clear, but once again, can't shoot from the four spot, so it's really hard to hide back here 
without being able to start all the way on the outside. So she layers on another block, and that is picture perfect. Really, really nice block. And luck, kind of lucky, roll that into a Tampa. Not intentional. I think I was just trying to clear that. So yeah, she's filling in in between the two. And just like what happened to me, A, that drifted to the right, but B, she didn't get there. And I think that kind of is a sign that those yellow discs are all slightly different speed. So now me, I'm down six. I mean, I guess I could clear, but she doesn't have any, any hide opportunity. So this is almost like a freebie hide opportunity. I want it to be like right there. And I get it just to the left of where I want it. But I think I'm probably pretty happy with it because for her, for her to kitchen that, she would have to read that drift so perfectly and it's just a super, super hard shot. So I don't even know what she's going for here. Maybe going for like a 10 to try to hide behind that. Let's see. Yeah, going for either a high eight on this side or a 10. But either way, I mean, maybe that was an intentional block because like this whole board is blocked up. And you can see me pointing like, I know it drifts this way. So I'm trying to figure out where I have to aim. I think for this one, I actually aimed over here because the worst thing that could happen is me to clip this and knock it into a 10. You see that happen all the time, especially with the drift going that way. If I don't overcompensate, I'm bumping that into the 10. So I think for that, I'm aiming like all the way out here. Yeah, you can see I was aiming all the way out here and it just like doesn't drift nearly as much. But I kind of feel good because I did get the hammer. You know what I mean? Like having that, I have a two point lead with us having the same number of hammers left. Um, getting that additional disc in would have made me kind of like really in the driver's seat. But I was pretty happy I didn't knock her 10 in. I think that was like a really nice defensive shot from Missy's last shot, kind of closing off that board for me. So yeah, up to uh, four frames left, same number of hammers. Obviously, if I can, if I can keep a clear and score the hammer, I'm feeling good. Um, but uh, yeah, I feel pretty, pretty comfortable at this point. Let's see. And I stick it, and the disc bounces back. I hate when that happens. So yeah, she has a hide opportunity. You saw when I took a hide opportunity, a curve to the right though. So let's see if she's able to adjust and get this. Yeah, curves right really hard. Like, that didn't even make it on my side of the court. I could have swore during one of my warm-up shots, though, it, it, like, seemed like it drifted to the left. I don't know. But, yeah, that's one where, like, kind of not reading it well on Missy's um, part, remembering that I took that line and how much it drifted. I tried to clear it out a second time and missed badly. And now at this point in the frame, like now I'm worried because she could try to hide again. She could bump that in. Now I'm like really in scramble mode on this frame. So instead of going for the bump, she goes for the hide again and she gets it really, really nicely. That is like a 10 out of 10 nasty shot. Some shaking my head. That's like a tell. If, I, <laughs> if, I, if I'm more worried about a frame, I'd definitely shake my head. I'm like, what am I gonna do here? Um, yeah, really nice shot. My move, I think best best shot is probably try to clear that black or combo that black into the yellow because they're not too far apart. Let's see. Oh, go down the center and get it. All right, so now she has to make the exact same shot. Man, I'm surprised I got that. So yeah, exact same shot. Or she could just bump that yellow into an eight uh, and have a blocked up eight on her last shot. But yeah, going for the same thing, and comes up a little short, but she gets the snuggle on the 10. Yeah, nice shot from her. I don't know if that's what she was going for, but I remember for this one, here, I'm just gonna pause it real quick. If you remember, I didn't take this line uh, going shooting a 10 in any of my warm-up shots. Normally, I like throw up a Tampa, try to figure out the drift shooting a straight down the middle for a 10, and then take two St. Pete hides and like that, try to figure out the drift on that. But because I came up short on my warm up shots, I didn't have the opportunity because I needed to like shoot a St. Pete or shoot a Tampa hide again to try to learn the drift. So here I'm just sort of guessing that because the cross court shots drifted left, I thought it was going to curve. I think I was aiming like here, like one inch to the center of the disc, hoping it drifts one inch to the left. 
um, and I hit this straight on and score the 10. So yeah, let's see. Shoot it pretty hard and doesn't drift at all to the left. Like either I shot it too hard and it didn't drift to the left or I just mis misjudged it and straight down the center, it, it doesn't drift at all. Um, either way though, like that was a pretty critical hammer for me to miss. And now I'm back sort of being a little worried because she has the extra hammer here. I'm up two, but I don't feel good at all. So I need to steal a hammer in this frame or in the next frame is my mentality. Like, just give me an opportunity to hide behind something. So yeah, a Tampa, another Tampa. Man, almost missed the lag line. Yeah, she clears it nicely. This is one where I think I, do I switch to a St. Pete here? I don't know. She's clearing those Tampas really well. Yeah, I switch it to like, what I'm trying to get is a high St. Pete and it curls left so hard that like, even if she sticks it, I'm not gonna be able to hide behind that. So, kind of a bummer there. Yeah, but she sticks it. And I mean, it rolls pretty far to the right. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna hide a disc like all the way over here. Uh, I think I go for it. Yeah, I go for this one. But like, what am I, you know, it drifts this way. I would have to get it all the way over here to have it be hidden. And I score, but that is not hidden. She like definitely has a straight line at it. Critical shot. I mean, it's a high seven though. So I definitely feel good about that. So her move probably hit it straight on and hope that it, her disc rolls to the left a little bit. You don't necessarily want to kitchen it um, because of the drift in that area of the court. And yeah, she just like whiffs it. Oh, that's so rough. That is so rough. Just the drift took it to the left. And yeah, now two frames left, I'm up nine. Man. That is wild. I cannot believe she whiffed that. Also, we were playing the night before. We like came through Thursday night, and I remember we were playing a fun game on this court, and like she missed to the left there too. So, one of those things where like it's it's so hard if you haven't taken that line as a warm-up shot to remember. But yeah, now I'm feeling pretty good as long as I can keep it clear. Up nine two. She's gonna be like forced to play. I guess I'm surprised she's not going for kitchen game. Oh yeah, there she goes, switches it up. Being up nine, or being down nine, you're either gonna have to like keep it clear and score your hammer and get a 10, or play the kitchen game. Kitchen game seems like such a better strategy to me. Um, so yeah, smart going on the board. Uh, I was clearing pretty well though at this point. So I'm feeling pretty good. Tries to put up an eight on the left. And I remember for this one, I'm like, the all I want is to not stay in the 10 and give her a backstop. And of course that's what happens. I try to clear, <laughs> look at me like laughing. I just did not want to give her a backstop. I was like, let me keep the board clear, have her make the 10. If she misses it, the game's pretty much mine. If she makes it, all right, I'm down one. But I just made that shot way easier for her by giving her like a very deep 10 to aim at. However, I missed the same shot on my last hammer. So, yeah, huge shot. Oh, she's, oh yeah, there were like feathers all over the court, pigeon feathers. Uh, she's removing that. That's where those little white spots are. Huge shot from her. Let's see if she gets it. Yeah, suits it straight. Oh Gives a kitchen God. plus speed. Really, really nice 10, does not get the kitchen. Uh, but like amazing amazing clutch shot from Missy the Missile Really really nice. So now last frame. I am down one and need to convert this hammer to win Yeah, I think there's something to be said about here. I'll, I'll uh, talk about that a little bit. Let's get through the action here So yeah, she's starting off by going on the board trying to play kitchen bait I am clearing hard I would I don't need, I mean, some people would play the kitchen game in this scenario, like, let's try to get that score early, but I'm not worried about that. I'm just trying to keep it clear and score the hammer. 
she switches up to a CP, which, you know, probably makes sense because I cleared the last one so well. And I win. But, like, like I mentioned multiple times. Oh, yeah, the disc bounced back, so I got to grab it. So I'm just going to pause it real quick. Like I mentioned multiple times, this table, ma'am, this is one where she, this is like a perfect St. Pete. This is super easy to hide behind. You just got to aim there. Maybe actually aim there. Maybe aim here. Um, but you can't really get that angle because you can't shoot from the four, the four spot. Like the four spot makes it so easy. Shooting from here, you have to like really hug this, this disc tightly and the court drifts this way. So this is one where I hope I'm not like kind of spoiling it, but just such a hard shot from that from that middle area and this is one where like this could have won the game for her in like one shot if she got this high but instead it curls right like crazy um tough decision for me do i clear the same pete and then she tries to split that the two the yellow one on the 8-8 line or do i clear the yellow on the 8-8 i opt to clear the yellow on the 8-8 thinking that this is a really hard hide she's probably not going to get it because that that table's in the way um, and yeah, she's not even going for it again, which like that would hundred percent be the right shot. Hide on at roll palms, like just hide the eight, but yeah, her last shot of the game going for a high 10 and gets like a medium 10. So this is one where once again, did not take this line during my warm up shots. I'm not feeling super confident right now without having practiced this. Trying to trying to loosen up a little bit. I don't need to worry about the kitchen. I'm thinking just aim at the center of it. You know, the last one where I thought it was going to drift one inch to the left going in the other direction, uh, it didn't curve at all. So like, let me just throw it right down, throw it straight right down the center. And get the 10 to win the game. Nice little high five. Point to the Golden Tank shirts. And yeah, that was a fun one. Um, yeah, I think there's something. One last point uh, to wrap up. I think there's something on courts like this that I've noticed where courts that like kind of drift towards the center line, because there's almost like a U shape going on sometimes that line down the center is really straight. And I, I see that in um, St. Pete a lot too, where like the, in Brooklyn, throwing a high 10 is a really great strategy because even if you throw a deep 10, it's really hard. The drift down the center line is like super unpredictable. And I think maybe part of it's like people walking all over the courts, the parties, like whatever it is, the way the concrete settled, but it's really, really hard to clear and replace a 10 on our drifty courts. But courts like this, that kind of like drift to the center line, sometimes that line down the center is just like super straight. So that's sort of what we saw. Like mo both of us were going for those high tens as our last shot, thinking is really, really hard. And most of them were converted. I mean, I definitely missed one, but like a lot of them were converted. Um, so maybe in that situation, trying to go for a high seven on your last shot before your opponent's hammer, like I did when I had one back here, um, that might be the best strategy. Obviously, you don't want to kitchen yourself, but like trying to put a disc towards the edge of the court where that's where most of the drift is might be the hardest thing to clear and for someone to clear and replace on their hammer. Either way, I hope you had a blast uh, getting the inner workings of my mind during a 16 frame shuffleboard match. This was a, a really, really fun one. Uh, Lansing Shuffle, amazing place to play shuffleboard. Uh, they have five beautiful courts. You see like the river in the background. Um, the It's in really great condition because it was just built out. Uh, when their leagues start, if you are in the area, 100% recommend you sign up. It is a super special place. Really, really enjoyed uh, playing. And thank you so much for joining. Definitely subscribe if you haven't already. And peace out.